Calculations in Power BI can be tricky. And one of the main reasons for that is that you cannot just point to other cells in your visual like you can in Excel. However, this might now all change with the new offset function, which lets you do exactly that. Now the function is officially not released just yet. However, you can already use it. So let's start exploring and see how it works and if it makes our decks easier. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look at this new unreleased function called offset. Now with the offset function, we can point to other result cells in our visual and do visual level calculations, which was not really possible before. So therefore, this is a very interesting function to explore. Now let's start our example in Excel and then switch to Power BI to do a similar calculation using that new offset function. Here we have the sales by month. And what I want to calculate is the month over month differences. So we can just go to the column right next to it on the February row. And then type in over here an equal sign, refer to that 21.5, the sales value for February, and subtract the sales value for January. All right. Now, if I want to have this for all of the months, I can just copy this down, and that's it. Now, as you can see, super easy to do in Excel because you can just point to the cells with the values that you need for your calculation. However, in Power BI, even with the offset function, it's going to be still a bit trickier. Now, let's go one step back. Now, in Power BI, later on, we're going to need the offset function, which you also have in Excel. Now, let's first see how that works in Excel. So, offset, you need a reference. Now, here we are on the February row. So, I'm going to start with that reference to the February value, and then we can say, how many rows and columns we want to move. Now I want to go one row up, so minus one to go to the January row. And then how many columns do we want to move? No, zero. All right, close that offset function and you see it returns the 16.3. We offset it by one so that we get the January value. And if we want to calculate the difference, then we can just point to the February value minus that offset value. And that gives us also 5.2. So now we can just copy down this formula and that's it. Now, another example that we're going to look at later in Power BI is going to be this one over here, where we have the sales by different manufacturers. And also here, we can just first offset all of the values by one row. Now, over here in Excel, I can just point to it. And then to calculate the differences, we can take the value on the same row and then take that offset value. All right and drag it down. Okay, now let's go to Power BI and see how that offset function actually works. So here we are in Power BI, where we have a matrix visual that shows the total sales by manufacturer, just like an example before. Now, let's create a measure and use now the offset function to offset these values by one, two, or three rows. Okay, now here I'm gonna insert a new measure and let's call this one offset manufacturer. Now still we need a calculate function. So calculate, and we want to have as an expression the total sales. So now the interesting part where we can use the offset function to take the total sales from the cells above it or below it. So from the manufacturers that are above or below the current row. Okay, now let's start typing offset and nothing pops up. And that is because there is no IntelliSense just yet for this function, it's still unreleased. However, we can still use it, even though it will show as if there's an error. Okay, so let's type in offset, bracket open, all right, and now I go to the first argument. Now, the first argument is whether we want to go rows up, so items up or down, right? So let's go for, let's say, minus one. So one item down, one manufacturer down. And then the second argument where we need to define the field or the column in which we want to move our item. Okay, now here that is manufacturer. Now, how can we do that? We can use a function like all or all selected. Now, I go here for all selected so that we keep filters from outside of the visual. And then we can refer to the manufacturer. All right, then the third argument, and that's the last one, here we need to say, okay, how do we actually 
want to sort these manufacturers? Do we want to have them in ascending order or descending order? And that is very important because that will determine what is the next item above it or below it, right? So here we can use a new function, again a new function called order by. Okay, so we want to sort them, order them by, and over here we can just refer to the manufacturer again, so that we have them alphabetically, and we can put them either in ascending or descending order. Okay, so you can type in here descending or ascending. Okay, now then we can close the offset function. I see it shows as if there is an error, but it will still work. All right, and then we can close the calculate function. All right, now let's take a measure and add it to our visual. And you see now where we have Cybrick, so that's the second manufacturer, it returns the total sales of Audiolog, the row above it. And when we have Digiwatt, you see it returns the total sales from, well, the manufacturer above it. All right, now, of course, we can shift that also in different ways. We can go back to our measure, and instead of minus one, we could do minus two. And then you see the values shift by two rows. And for those rows at the top, well, there's a blank. Okay, now we can also go in the other direction. If I make this plus two or just two, then you see the values shift the other way. So over here in the first row, we have 54.8, which is the value for, well, the two manufacturers down, DigiWatts. So if I want to have the differences from one manufacturer to the other, then, well, I have to change this back to minus one. And then here at the beginning, we can simply say that we want to have the total sales minus, well, the value from above it. So that kind of works. We have the differences between the rows. Huh? So if we have a look here at Cybrick, there we have 53.1 minus the 1.3 is 51.8. So that works. However, for the very first row, it's a little bit weird because there, well, the offset is blank. So it just returns the total sales. So maybe uh, you don't want to show anything for that specific cell. Then we can adjust the formula, which I will show you in another example. But before we go there, let's have a look what happens when we have another field that we add onto rows. Okay, so I'm gonna take here my visual and here we can take channel name from the table dim channel and I'm gonna put it right above manufacturer. All right, so over here, first we have the channel, then we have to expand down. And to see what that offset function does, let's go back here to the measure. And here we take out that total sales minus so that we only look at the offset values. And you see the logic is still the same. We have our values shifted by one row within that channel. Now it gets a little bit trickier when I change the order here and put channel name below manufacturer. All right, now let's expand down again. And now it's a little bit trickier to see what the offset function is doing. Now, here, if you go to the manufacturer Cybrick catalog channel, we have 0 0.6, which is the total sales for catalog audio log. All right, so the manufacturer above it. Then the next one, 0 0.4, that is then the channel online. However, for the manufacturer above it. So audio log. So everything also shifts by one manufacturer. It's just that the cells are not right next to each other. Okay, so therefore a bit tricky to see what's going on. So now you get how the offset function works. However, there also needs to be a meaningful sorting order for the items that you're shifting. Otherwise, there's no practical use. For example, here, comparing Cybrick to audio log, well, it's kind of pointless. I wouldn't use this in practice. Unless there's already some natural sorting order that does make sense. For example, with months. All right, so let's look at an example where we have months on rows. Now to save a little bit of time, we can just go here to the offset manufacturer measure. I'm just gonna copy the whole thing and then insert a new measure. And here we want to offset the month. So let's rename it. And then we have to change dim product manufacturer to dim date and then month. And the same over here, we can also refer to the month column in the date table. Then let's take our measure and add it to our visual that has the months on the rows. And nothing shows. Why not? Because the month column has a sort by column, which is the month number, so that the months are sorted in the correct way. So whenever there's a sort by column, you have to make sure that you also include that one in your measure. All right, so in our measure, we need to include the month number as well. So here, month number, and then here for order by, well, I want to use the month number to sort 
a month, okay, so that we have everything in the right order from January till December, and that's it. So the field that you order by also needs to be over here in the all selected function. Okay, now let's see if it works now, and it works, perfect. All right, so the problem is fixed. Now we want to have the difference month over month. So let's go back again, and then we can say total sales minus what we just wrote before, and you see it works. However, for January, it's a little bit weird huh? because here we have 40 minus nothing because there's no offset value. So therefore it shows 40. Now, how can I show just a blank? Well, we can just go back and here let's work with variables. So I'm just going to type here var and then sales offset. That's the name of the variable. This is what we had before the offset value. And then we want to have a variable for the result where we can then say if, and then not is blank, the sales offset value, which is the case for uh, January that it's blank, all right? Then we want to return the difference between total sales and the sales offset, all right? And otherwise, nothing. So that's it. Then return the result. So that looks much better. And now you're probably wondering, can we use that offset function for our time intelligence measures? Does it make it easier? Well, uh, not really, or at least not at this point yet. And let me show you why. I'm going to bring in the year. So let's go here to our hierarchy, show, uh, show all levels. I'm going to only show the year and the month, and then we can expand down. I see the month over month values are calculated correctly. However, the problem is when we switch the years, when we go from 2018 to 2019, because for January 2019, well, it's empty. It cannot grab the December value from 2018. And that is kind of problematic when you do time intelligence calculations. So that's a bit unfortunate. Here for the months, we have a sorting order that makes sense, but the offset function doesn't really make life easier. So let's go back to our previous example and see if we can apply a logical sorting order to the manufacturers so that the offset function does have practical use. Okay, now let's go back. Now here the order by argument is very important because it takes the list of manufacturers and then sorts them in alphabetical order, here in ascending order, and then, well, it goes to the row above it or below it, in this case, below it. Now at the moment in the visual, we have the same sorting order. We sort by manufacturer in ascending order but I could do the opposite. So we will flip everything if we do descending. Now here we have descending, but in the visual we have ascending. And now you see that the values get offset one row up. So the cybering value is now shown here on the row for audio log. Now to visualize this a little bit better, we can create a, a copy of a table right next to it. And then I'm going to sort this one in descending order by manufacturer. All right, so by manufacturer, descending order. Now here we have audio log, and if we go one row up, so minus one, then we have Cybrick, 53.1. And that's why that value shows there right next to audio log. Okay, so the sorting order is super important, okay? But you see, it's still not very meaningful. So what would be more meaningful is if we could sort the manufacturers by total sales so that we can compare the manufacturer with the next biggest one and then the next biggest one, okay? Now, how can we do it? Let's go back to our measure. And instead of saying order by DIM product manufacturer, I want to say over here, order by total sales, all right? Good, let's press enter. And hmm, disappointment, because the order by function only accepts a column reference as the argument. Hmm, that is not so good. So we cannot order our manufacturers by total sales. Now the first workaround that I thought about is what if we go back over here and then use add columns, all right? So we're going to create a table that has all of the manufacturers all right, that's in the first column. And then in the second column, I would like to have the sales aggregated, all right? Now, how can we do that? Well, we can just use over here the total sales, all right? And then close that add columns function. Okay, so now that we have here a table that has the manufacturer and sales, maybe that it works, all right? So over here, let's replace this with sales aggregated. So sales AGG and also here, that doesn't work because it says that the order by cannot be used with columns added by 
add columns or summarize. Okay, so this is not a workaround. So this approach unfortunately doesn't work. So if we cannot use add columns or summarize to add a column to our virtual table with the aggregated sales by manufacturer, well then let's add an actual column to the product table and use that one. All right, let's do this. So here in the data view, I go to dim product and let's add a new column and let's call this one sales aggregated. And then here we can use the calculate function and we want to calculate the total sales. And then we can use the all except function to remove all of the filters from all of the columns in the product table, except the manufacturer. So over here, then product manufacturer. All right, let's close that all except function and the calculate function. So that gives one value for each manufacturer. So the aggregated value. Okay. And now that we have that, we can go back, take a measure, and in a measure, we want to get rid of this add columns again and go back to all selected. And here we want to have a reference to DIM product manufacturer, and we want to have our aggregated sales value. So sales AGG. Okay. So both of them need to be in there. And then here we want to order by the sales AGG. And then we can also say if we want to order manufacturers in ascending or descending order by total sales. So let's go for ascending and let's see if it works. And here you see that for Cybrick, we have the value 45.7, which is the next largest value below it, which belongs to Coder. And then here for DigiWatts, we have 53.1, which is the next largest value, which belongs to Cybrick. So the manufacturers here are sorted by total sales and then it moves one row down, okay? So here to see that, let's go to the table right next to it, change the sorting order in ascending order. And over here we can say sort by total sales. So this might make it a little bit easier to see what this offset function is doing. So here we have 45.7, which is the offset value for Cybrick. So that belongs to well, coda, because that is the value above it when we sort our manufacturers by total sales. Now, another trick that you can do to understand this offset fu function a little bit better is by ranking the manufacturers by total sales. Okay, so let me create that measure. Let's call it rank manufacturers uh, by sales. All right, then we can use a rank X. Now, the table that we want to rank over is all selected and then we can refer to manufacturer so this returns a table with one column with all of the manufacturers that we want to rank and still respect filters that come from outside the visual all right and then we can say that we want to rank it by the total sales okay now that's it this measure can I also add to the visual and if we then go again to cybrick which is the second largest manufacturer based on sales now if we want to have the next largest manufacturer, so number three, well, is over here, Coder, all right, which has a value of 45.7, and that is exactly that offset value that you see there, okay? All right, so adding a rank measure to your table might help you understand this offset function a little bit better. Unfortunately, we've seen that we cannot use measures inside of our order by function to sort the field that we are using for our offset function, which is kind of a big deal because that would make it much more powerful. Now, of course, this function is officially not released just yet, so I probably wouldn't use it in any report because things might still change. And to be honest, it didn't really make things so much easier. We still needed uh, workarounds and they were, it was kind of difficult to find a real good practical use case. So I think that calculations at the visual level are really cool and offer a lot of potential. However, of course, we are not there just yet. All right, now let me know what you think. And if you have any comments, share them in the comment section below. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching. And if you want to check out more DAX videos, then just have a look over here. Thank you. And I'll see you next time.